Now, I want to direct your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm not going to be long unless you're quiet. If you're quiet, I would think I am not saying anything and I need to say more. But if you're, if you're saying amen and you agree with me and you are awake, even when you disagree, say, oh, Lord, I don't know about that. Okay. Uh, it's really important. First Corinthians chapter 12 is a long passage, and I'm going to read all of it. And I want you to pay attention. I'm going to begin with verse 12. First Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 12. Well, I thought you couldn't put it up. You got it. All right. Good. First Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 12. You can remember that when you get home, if you want to go over it again. First Corinthians 12, 12. All right? 12, 12. And we're going to read all through uh, verse 31. The body is a unit, though it is made of many parts, and though... All its parts are many. They form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now, the body is not made up of one part, but of many If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it will not for that reason cease to be part of the body. Paul, Paul is very funny. Okay? So, just saying you're not part of village doesn't make you not part of village. If you're truly part of it, Just saying that you're not part of it does not take you from it. Amen? Amen. My wife used to tell me I have big nose. You have a big nose. (laughs) She said, I you don't bring you don't breathe O2, you breathe O3. <laughs> okay, she denies it now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen, Paul, Paul is real funny here. He said, if the fool should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it will not for the reason that you just said it cease to be part of the body. And if the ear shall say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, oh my Lord. I know some of you are sitting down here very, very, you know, uh, sophisticated but if, you, if we find somebody walk in here and has 10 eyes on, I will be the only one left in here. Amen. Amen. Right. Janice, Janice will be faster than all of you. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. 
On the contrary, those parts of the body that's... Now, listen to that, verse 22. I'm going to go over it again. But I just want you to listen to that. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. Paul is going into privacy here. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others with, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Just listen to it. I, I just want to make a comment real briefly because I'm not going to touch on this in my message. Did you notice that the gift of tongues was listed last? Now, it seemed like Paul was talking in order of priority. First, second, third, then, then, then. You know, so he listed them. N- listen. We have the order twisted. There are even churches today who are saying, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not a Christian. We are so bad. We are so horrible that we have turned the Bible upside down. We have destroyed the Bible by emphasizing things that the Bible tried to de-emphasize. Miracles, healings, all those things were not listed high. But most of our churches today, we put priority on those instead of putting priority on the apostleship and the teaching and the prophecy. That's just a commercial. Are all apostles... Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? That's a rhetorical question. Those questions are rhetorical questions. The only logical answer is what? No. Whatever answer you have is incorrect if it's not no. But eagerly desire the greater gifts. Let me begin this message by saying this. I want to point out four things. I want to speak about team ministry. Team ministry in the use of spiritual gifts. Amen? Team ministry. I don't want the title to be too long. Just just two words. Team ministry. But in the use of our spiritual gifts, we always have to think as a team. Team ministry. What are the four things that we should always guide against in the church if we are to do team ministry successfully? Let's look at this passage. The first one is individualism. We are one, but there are many parts. 
And the parts depend on one another. Dependency and interdependency. Are you with me? If I'm using a word that is too big, say, say break it down. Okay? Dependency and interdependency. I depend on you. You depend on me. There is no one in here that is on an island by themselves. If you are, you're not part of the body. We'll talk about it later. Bless you. Number two. Spiritual superiority and inferiority. The first thing we should not do is just think of yourself as by yourself. Me, my, and my dog. I, 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 I heard about a dog experience with Dick and Roy. You didn't know Dick and Roy was afraid of dogs to begin with. And you let your dog out. They said, who let the dog out? <laughs> That's what you say. I've been with him for a long time. So individualism. We are not an island. When you are in the church, when you are in the body of Christ, you are not on your own. Amen. Now, the American way of life is a selfish way of life. Very selfish. I have my own small little house. And many of us don't even know our neighbors. I live in this big apartment. I don't want nobody coming here. Some of us keep our room so clean. Nobody, you don't want anybody to even come visit you. Because they'll leave the dust in your house. You know, we just we just like our privacy. And the thinking of our society has crept into the church that we have brought that self-individualism into the church. And when somebody in the body wants to correct you, encourage you, or lead you to the right way, say, oh, it's none of your business. When you are in the church, you are in the body. Amen. Saying it's no longer part of my if he doesn't want anything to do with. I tell you, you better be careful. When you live that individualism life, don't live it in the church. It was great experience for the Akoyon family this uh, week, uh, this past week. Shola came in to get Noah to go home. All of a sudden, he came back. I, 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 I can't go home because everything is spinning. I can't get my balance. We tried everything. Laid him on the couch and bring out the blood pressure thing and try this and try that. But you know the, the, the thing that's really interesting. What is causing all this problem is hidden right in his ear. You can't see it. And that is why you cannot, the, the body is one. Every part of your body is important. Amen. Because say, I'm a big man. I don't need my eyes anymore. I don't need you. I am on my own. Now, that's individual. The second thing I pointed out is 
you cannot feel spiritually superior or spiritually inferior. Amen. The Bible doesn't say we are not at different levels. That's not the point. Some of you spiritually are still in kindergarten. But you need to move up. Amen. Amen, lights. <laughs> we cannot all be at the same level at the same time. But the point is, you don't feel inferior to somebody because they are at a higher level than you are. And you don't look down on those who are at the lower level because they are not up to where you are. And the way we say that, you know, I, I, I believe... Uh, It was John MacArthur that first phrased this. He may have gotten it for somebody else. But it's a really simple statement. I don't need them or they don't need me. If you ever think that your church doesn't need you, you are thinking wrong. You're buying into the lie of Satan. I can't do anything. It's because you don't want to do anything. Are you still with me? So the first thing we should guide against if we want a good team ministry in the body of Christ at Village Baptist Church of Petaluma is individualism. Verses 12 through 20. The second thing we should guide against is spiritual superiority or inferiority. Verses 21 through 24. We're still staying in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The third thing we should guide against is divisiveness. There are just some people who major in division. They don't like multiplication. They don't like addition. They just want to divide. And they have many ways of doing it. Did you hear what? And many times it's that with innocent phone calls. Facebook messaging. And you know why you're doing it. You're not supposed to be doing it. Amen. While I'm at this, uh, allow me to uh, say this. Please, when you're on Facebook, don't tell people you belong to Village Baptist Church and on the same hand using a lot of curse words. You will see me on your page real quick. (laughs) Yeah, commercial. Thank you. (laughs) We cannot divide one another, each of us against the other, and then be a successful team ministry church. We cannot. It's impossible. And Paul did a good job on this passage. Let me go on to the last one before I get into the message. Number four. What, what is the thing that we should go against? If you're not saying too much amen. I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going. The next thing Paul talks about in here that we should take with us is disorder and rebellion. God is a God of order. Amen. 
You know how God is a God of order? There is night and there is day. Amen? You cannot call me in my house at 2 a.m. and think it's normal. Unless you have an emergency. Amen? If you call me, call me at a civilized hour. That's order. It should be simply respected. God said, in the church I have order. First apostle, second prophets, third teachers, and on and on and on and on. There is order in the church. There's order in how you should do things. There's order in how not to do things. Some people are just rebellious. I'm a hippie. Well, go join hippies. Amen. If you're a hippie and you come here, you're going to be a hippie for Jesus that follows others. Just in case you think I'm making that up, look at verses 27 through 31. Isn't it interesting that you can take these biblical principles and apply it in the team concept? We talked about the body already. It's really interesting. How can I talk without my mouth or my hands? Yeah. If you cannot speak out loud, you ought to know dactylology, sign language, right? You can use your hands. I was in dactylology for one semester and I had enough. Thank God I can use my mouth. And it's a big mouth. And you get used to it. You cannot, you cannot do some things without parts of your body. It's impossible. And every part of the body is important. And that is why God wants the church to operate as a body. It is the body of Christ. It has Yes, it has nose, it has eyes, it has lungs, it has heart, it has all the parts of it. And we are not all the same. Thank God. (laughs) Some of us can talk forever. Some don't open their mouth. (laughs) But we have your place. You know, I played soccer when I was in high school. In fact, I played soccer to the highest level in high school to Western academicals. And I learned that in soccer, you've got to be a team. It doesn't matter how good you are. The team is the most important thing, not you. I was the goalie. I was short. They said goalies ought to be tall, but I was short. But I was one of the best. Because I could dive. I could jump. In fact, I still held the high school. Uh, uh. <laughs> I say because it has not been broken. <laughs> Joshua is laughing because I boasted about that in the house. So I hold the high school jump record in my high school. 
I can touch the ceiling. And he's looking at me. (laughs) Okay, dad, do it. Exactly. (laughs) I tried several times, Sammy. You know how I knew I tried several times? The next day I couldn't walk. I had forgotten that was 40 years ago. (laughs) But there are rules in soccer. Only the goalie can touch the ball. The only time you are expected to touch the ball if, if you're doing a throw-in and you're not a goalkeeper. Many of us want to be the goalkeeper. I don't care. I want to be the goalkeeper. There you go. You're the forward. You're the striker. You're the uh, uh, wing. And you're going and all of a sudden somebody is trying to uh, uh, get in your way. You just pick up the ball. Boom. <laughs> That's a guy out there that's wearing black and black or whatever they wear now. He's going to blow a whistle against you. Foul! You don't know you can't do that? It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. You have your own position. God doesn't want you to play the pastor. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Immediately you start doing that, the angels will blow the whistle. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, some of you pretend you're not playing the pastor. Or you come into the pastor's office. Pastor. This is the way I see it. The way you see it is not that important. That's why God didn't call you to be the pastor. If some of you were pastors, this church would be empty. Amen. People have a way of letting me know they're more spiritual than I am. Uh, Pastor, I I don't know why you allow this person to keep doing this. I saw them here. I saw them there. I said, well, go deal with it. You saw them. I didn't see them. And what were you doing there? It's basketball. Amen. Basketball has five positions. Amen. <laughs> that those are the guards. One is called the point guard. Right? He is the one that's in charge of the of the whole thing. Amen. Kobe, you're not the point guard. You may be the best player on the team, but you ain't the point guard. Pass the ball. (laughs) Give it to somebody else. Amen. 
Can you imagine the point guard trying to be the center? You five eleven nothing. You get in there, say, pass it to me. That's not your position. Amen. Some of you can't shoot nothing. Amen. Amen. You know, if uh, shooting the free throws was a standard for basketball, Shaquille O'Neal will not be in the Hall of Fame. Amen. I'm better than he is. And I didn't play any organized basketball except in my backyard. Can you imagine Shaquille O'Neal being the point guard? Amen. The 49ers find out not everybody can be quarterback. <laughs> Amen, 49ers. <laughs> oh, come on now, you guys. <laughs> hey, Joe, what's happening? <laughs> That's why you play your position. You cannot be the quarterback and play running back. Be satisfied that you are a kicker. Do you know that many Super Bowls have been won by the foot of the kicker? A person that you don't even see until that's a problem. They're on the side trying, practicing, doing everything. You don't see a kicker until that's a problem. And sometimes they become the most important player on the team. Don't let anybody put down your gift in the church. God gave you that gift so you can use it. To edify the body. Now let's let's get some others and then I'll shut up. As the church is a team, a team ministry, you always have to recognize that there's an owner. And you do everything to please the owner. Amen. The pastor is not the owner. The elders are not the owner. The deacons are not the owner. The teachers are not the owner. God is the owner of the church. And Jesus said, I am the great head of the church. So if you, if you want to do well in the church, you've got to submit to the headship of Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can be part of the team. That's the rudimentary qualification for being on the team. If Jesus Christ is not the head of your life, the head of your life, you have not been drafted to play on the team. You don't qualify. You also have to understand that there are people called the administrators. God put them there because he knows he has a lot of knuckleheaders in the church. So he can put us in order. We have coaches. Amen. Sometimes you come in thinking you know everything. No, listen to the coach. That's why God put pastors and teachers in here so you can be taught the right way to do things. And when you move from church to church, always recognize the autonomy of each local church. Amen. 
Don't say, I already know how to do because I did it at Jerusalem Baptist Church. Jerusalem Baptist, well, go back to Jerusalem Baptist Church and do it. Always recognize your position. Your position in Christ. I put it this way. Grow where you're planted. Your position. What the gifts that God has given to you. That is why it is really important for you to find out what your gifts are. So you are not in somebody else's lane. Have you ever watched football and you see all these big guys, all these athletic guys, all these excellent uh, guys that have, have all this uh, knowledge about football and they're running during the kickoff. They're trying to cover the other team, the runner on the other team, what they call the kick returner. And you see, why are they running? They're not going to t- the, the one who has the ball, but they're just running in their lane. Why? Because if you miss an assignment, somebody is going to be left open. And they learn that from coaching. You stay in your lane. You can be the fastest on a, on a, on a track field if you uh, are on left, but he knows the rules. If you cross over just a little bit to somebody else's lane, you're disqualified. Too many of us in the church run in a race like this. You're supposed to stay in your lane. Stop running into somebody else's lane. Try to be the Holy Spirit for everybody. Number five. Understand that we have to cooperate. You have to cooperate in order for it to work. You go back. You take my points. Go back and read chapter 12, verses 21. And verses 12 through 31. And understand the points I'm saying to you here. There is no I in team. I know you've heard that several times, but let me say it again. There is no I in team unless you don't know how to spell. T-I-M is is the name of a person. Team is spell what? T-E-A-M. Learn how to spell right. It doesn't matter how good you are. On many teams that Josh has been in, I don't care where he goes, whether I be in the uh, NBA, whether I be in the developmental league, whether I be in Europe, whether I be in China, he has been the leading scorer on every team he has been. But you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't even know he plays basketball. He's not that tall. (laughs) But it doesn't matter what team he gets on. If they want him to play point guard, soon, soon enough, the coach is going to say, just shoot the ball. We're behind. Shoot the doggone ball. There's no I. You're there for your team. Your team is there for you. There's no I. There's no I in church. Amen. (laughs) Connie is really hearing this. And the last point is we win or lose together. 
Amen. Amen. You blaming village. You said they don't do this at village. They don't do it. What church do you go to? Village? So who are you blaming? If it's not good at village, it's because of you. Amen? Why do you think we have all these empty chairs? We have enough members to fill all the chairs. God is good. All the time. I'm done. Let's pray.